Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's a pleasure being here. Um, as we mentioned, today we'll cover a topic uh, titled An Overview of Tool Marks on Bones and Cartilages. Uh, but a brief uh, disclaimer on the beginning, uh, points of view of this presentation are mine and do not necessarily represent uh, the point of views of uh, or positions of Dubai police. Certain commercial equipment and instruments or materials identified in the session are in order to demonstrate the examination procedure and is not intended to imply the recommenda recommendation or endorsement by Dubai police, nor intended to imply that they are the best uh, available for the purpose. Without further ado, we will be covering um, the, these main outlines uh, or content. Uh, first, we'll go through a, a brief introduction to the topic, um, then the, the handling and preservation of methods with regards to tool marks on bones and cartilages. After that, the preparation and casting methods for this kind of examination and uh, testing mediums. So what is the difference when we when we um, use uh, or try to examine tool marks on bones and cartilages? What are the types of, of um, good test mediums that are available out there? And last but not least, a brief case study in order for us to, to um, visualize what are we actually getting through. Um, in the beginning, tool marks on bones and cartilages is, is applied in different applications, not just in forensics, but also, also in um, archaeology, anthropology, and more. Um, um, however, with regards to forensics, uh, numerous homicide or suicide cases all over the world involve sharp, sharp, sharp objects, tools such as knives, swords, axes, um, you name it, in committing these horrific crimes. Um, the tool marks identification discipline is the, the a forensic science which um, 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 as a primary concern uh, to, is to determine if a tool mark was produced by a particular tool or not. Uh, several papers have discussed uh, the successful identification of these types of tool marks on bones and cartilages, but uh, mainly, this is due to the, the, the collaborative relationship between uh, tool marks examiners and forensics pathologists. So to be honest, whenever um, we, come we, we come across this kind of relationship in any kind of lab, we see the, the, um, this kind of examination uh, mostly applicable. Whereas where where, um, um, the, where where we have where we don't have this kind of relationship in in uh, certain labs, uh, sometimes uh, we don't see that fire or tool marks examiners particularly. Um, I would say have the guts to 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 look at uh, or go to to an autopsy and visualize um, tool marks on bones and cartilages. So. Uh, um, the first thing that we did is at least try to learn the, 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 the correct terminology for certain types of, of certain parts of the body, you know, in order for us to achieve a, a common language, then we start communicating in order for us to deliver uh, something um, unique such as this kind of examination. There are four uh, preliminary tissues in a human body, uh, epithelial tissues, which refer to a group of cells that cover the exterior uh, surface of the body, skin, the, the line internal cavity, passageways, and form certain glands in the body. The connective tissue, as its name uh, refers, uh, it connects or binds cells and organs uh, of the body together. Muscle tissue contracts forcefully when excited and providing movement. And last but not least, nervous tissue is also excitable, allowing the generation and propagation of electrochemical signals in the form of nerve impulses that communicate between different regions of the body. However, with regards to tool marks examination, we will only be focusing on connective tissues. And uh, because bones and cartilages are a type of, of connective tissues. Uh, that said, um, as Rao mentioned in his paper, uh, the, the, the only type of connective tissue that maintains two marks are cartilages and bones. 
Um, digging into this a little bit deeper, um, what are cartilages? So we'll, we'll discuss what are cartilages and we'll discuss what are bones and are there different kinds of bones? Are there different types of cartilages, etc.? Uh, first of all, a cartilage is a semisoid heterogeneous collagen matrix inside an extracellular matrix filled with ground substance fibers made of chondrocyte cells in cavities called lacunae. So it's uh, in, in simple terms, it's, it's a jelly-like substance or a gelatin-like substance, and it's filled with water. If you leave it out to dry, it will dry and, and it will evaporate. Um, but as you can see, uh, the hardness of the cartilages vary in the human body at different locations, as we see in the figure on the right. Uh, we have three main types of cartilages, high line, uh, elastic, and fibrocartilage. And uh, these vary in, in different parts of the body depending on their function. Um, cartilages also contain a lot of water, which help resist tension and compression. Um, similarly, if you look at the spine, um, there are in, in between the, we call them in general discs uh, of the spine, uh, we have cartilages, so they absorb the shock. Uh, these hydrate and decompose in the post-mortem stage. So uh, depending on the, 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 um, uh, the body that you are examining, if it is, for example, um, decomposed uh, out in the desert for maybe four or five months, then most probably we, we will not find cartilages if the body internal cavity of the body is exposed. Uh, However, with regards to bones, uh, bones are classified into shapes. Uh, so we have long, short, flat, and irregular bone. With regards to long bone, um, uh, are generally made up of spongy bone covered by a thin plate of compact bone. So if you look at the, the figure on the right, the spongy bone literally looks like a sponge. So it's, it's similar to a surface which has holes or cavities inside. But as tool marks examiners, we, it, this is similar to a piece of cable wire where sometimes you would look at the, the plastic um, cover um, of that cable in order for you to, to determine uh, whether tool marks are actually sufficient or not uh, in that wire. Um, so most viable or valid uh, tool marks are usually on the compact bone side. However, with regards to, to short, irregular, and flat bone types, these are gen generally thin plates of spongy bone. So there is not a lot of spongy bone covered with uh, compact bone, such as uh, the ribs, etc. Um, there we have no well-defined cavity for the bone marrow to sit in, so it, it, it generally uh, varies in terms of shape. However, we have high line cartridge covering portions of the surface where the joints are in contact, similarly to, to what we saw earlier with regards to, to the spine. Um, at the post-mortem stage of the human body, the bones become dry, brittle, uh, with hard uh, outer surface. If it is exposed, generally we see um, a withering. You know, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, becomes, uh, uh, it's, it's like peeling something off. Okay, so with regards to, to handling and preservation methods for tool marks on bones and cartilages, uh, we noticed that the, the medical examiners uh, actually know what are striations. So this is not something new to them. However, as tool marks examiners, we, we tend to look at uh, marks, whether striations or impressions under a stereo microscope. But whenever we go to a, a, an autopsy, this is not the case. We usually depend on our, on our eyes or, or maybe just bring a magnifying glass with you. Um, so the, the best way to go across this is not rely on, on naked eye assessment, uh, rather um, high power magnification, uh, preferably times, uh, times two to times four uh, with a adjustable light source. This will allow you to, to, to uh, um, uh, bring up the hills and valleys of a, any kind of striation on a bone, um, even if it is just the potential of having striations, then we say, yes, okay, let's, let's send it to, to the tool marks lab. 
this is th this comes with 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 habit. So we want um, all the medical examiners or pathologists to to whenever we have a um, uh, a tool mark um, on a bone or a cartilage, uh, just the possibility or the potential likeliness that this might actually have valid or sufficient tool marks for, for examination. We urge them to, um, um, to send them over to the tool marks lab because at the end of the day, it's not about, yes, the, the, this uh, wound injury is um, two centi wide and five centi deep um, on this orientation. No, uh, what we are bringing to the table as tool marks or physical examiners here, um, is the identification of a specific tool, whether, yes, this is the sword that was used, this is the axe that was used in, in this homicide or suicide case. Um, with regards to, to tool marks, uh, striations, uh, there are a lot of literature, but to, to give you an overview, um, there is this paper by James Barley and uh, Craig Barley also, uh, which they demonstrated that uh, with long-term uh, storage, um, in their paper, they, they did six months, uh, which they had tool marks of, of bones um, into antimicrobial solution preservatives. So uh, buffer 10% formalin, um, ethyl alcohol, uh, autopsy alcohol, 93% uh, ethyl alcohol, iodine, 5%, 10%, and sodium hydrochloride. Um, and they look, looked at the, the, uh, these tool marks before and after. The, the six months period where they identified that, for example, 10% iodine is, is better uh, in terms of pre preventing shrinkage or having the, the two marks there. Uh, but to be honest, uh, this, is, this is what uh, uh, we do at Dubai Police. We don't, we don't preserve the tool mark on bones and cartilage. Whenever they come uh, to us, uh, we directly take them out of the fridge, we document them, uh, photograph them, whatever the case may be, and then um, 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 handle them properly. Um, so with regards to, to, to handling and transportation from the medical uh, examiner or the, the the pathologists to the tool marks lab. Uh, we uh, we used Wong's uh, Wong's research uh, with regards to to uh, to eliminate and minimize shrinkage. So uh, to sum it up, for bones, it would be best to refrigerate or freeze uh, 0 0.9 uh, saline solution or freeze them in distilled water. So this is for bones. Uh, with regards to cartilages, it is best to refrigerate or uh, freeze them and buffer 10% for medine solution. Usually in, in, um, in medical examiner's office, you will see formalin, but uh, just focus that or try to try to remember that formalin is better for, for cartilages, whereas saline or, or even just distilled water is better for bones. Um, both when it comes to to, so this is this is the only difference, to be honest. When when um, we are examining tool marks on bones and cartilages compared to tool marks on traditional surfaces, uh, steel, aluminium, lead, whatever the case may be, um, the only difference is the handling in terms of transportation and how can we uh, how how are we preparing the the exhibit itself. Um, so, for example, bones and cartilages, after we, we clean them, we decrease, we, first we decrease, uh, degrease them and uh, clean them using water, ethanol, and cotton tip swabs. So this is to remove any, any fatty tissues, uh, residues, then dry thoroughly uh, before applying casting material. This is very important. This is where we, we learned a lot. Um, so for both cartilages and, and bones, uh, what we do is, is we bring a, a ethanol uh, and we, we just rub it off using tissues, uh, cotton swabs, um, you name it until it's, it's a bit dry and then we, we just dab it using tissues uh, and let it there to air dry to make sure it's, it's completely dry in order for the silicone or casting material to, to actually stick on it. 
Um, uh, then we cast. This is the first cast. Okay, we, we generally tend to do two casts. The first time we clean it, and if it was a bone, we macerate it, and we'll discuss this right now. Uh, then we cast it again. For tumor trombones, use a maceration method for removal of, of all soft tissues, which uh, involve uh, flesh, ligament, and ligament tendons. This might, must be done without damaging um, or morphing the bone, or basically changing the shape of the bone. Remember, this is not for cartilages. If you remember, cartilages is, is a form of, of gelatin substance, like, so gelatin, uh, whenever we're talking about cartilage, um, we just wash it using water, ethanol or acetone um, uh, with a cotton, uh, cotton swab, uh, dry it and cast it, that's it. When we're discussing bones, then we cast it the first time and we macerate it. Okay, then we cast again. And the reason behind this is sometimes we see marks that are better before maceration and sometimes there are marks that are uh, better after maceration and we, we will have a look at um, two or three examples after this. Um, there are four main types of maceration. Cold water maceration, which basically uh, you're leaving the bone inside a, 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 a plastic uh, or a bucket of, of uh, water, and you leave it there to to um, to deteriorate or remove these these soft tissues and clean itself. Um, this the advantage of this is this is easily done. Anyone can pick up the bone and place it into water. Uh, this will not. Um, or this will, this will not shrink or damage the small bones. Uh, this, the disadvantage is it's very smelly and time consuming. Imagine if you have a, a, uh, a murder case and everyone's on their toes and waiting for your answers, I wouldn't recommend this to, to go with. There is a hot water maceration. Um, it's faster uh, than cold water maceration, less smelly. Um, the potential of causing damage and shrinkage more difficult than cold water maceration. Um, the difference between this and that is you get you have a hot pot, okay, or or a boiler uh, that you set to to 95 degrees or uh, 100 degrees of, of boiling water, and you place the bones inside. Just remember to tie it with a string in order for for you to to easily remove it afterwards. Uh, bug box fist, uh, maceration or also called bug fistation. Um, this is where you have uh, bugs, uh, beetles, um, uh, eat, the, eat the, 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 the soft tissues off the bones. This is uh, beneficial when you have uh, um, a complex shape such as an entire skull. Um, this advantage is it's very smelly and time consuming and, uh, and as you can imagine, you need to have a, a bug farm at your lab, which is, which might be hard and enzyme maceration, you allow the enzymes to, to do the deterioration for you. So as, if you can see the, the image on your right, um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the bones are dried thoroughly and casted again, where it might be better before and might be better after. So if you look at this image on the right, you will see this small shape right here. This is before, the left is before, and the right is after. Whereas the striations are actually clearer afterwards. This might be uh, the a soft tissue um, that was covering this area. And with maceration, it was removed. And it's not always that, yes, either way, I will just macerate them and the marks will be better afterwards. Uh, the case might be the other way around. So uh, sometimes even before maceration, where we might have um, striations on the actual soft tissues, just covering, which, which show the, the contour of the, of the surface uh, better. So it's, it is there, but in terms of, of the, the visual uh, or optical comparison, light microscopy, um, sometimes even before the maceration, it's much better right here and right here. These are two separate, by the way, uh, two separate casts. Uh, with regards to, to testing mediums, 
So there are a lot of, of testing mediums with regards to, to tool march on bones. Um, throughout the last 50 years, we saw various medias such as tires, gypsum, plastic uh, tubes, wax, dip pack, and even uh, by Steve uh, or um, uh, Stephen uh, Ostrowski, uh, cattle blades and cattle skulls. Uh, but um, we prefer the, the, the wax uh, because it's more controllable, it's easier to use. So just have uh, uh, blocks of, of wax and for, for you to, to, to control your test uh, making uh, better. Um, a brief disclaimer. Um, okay, we're good on time. Uh, images of injuries in this presentation may be uh, disturbing to, to, to some. Okay, uh, this is the, the case study we're talking about and uh, the, the crime event that happened. Um, a fight between a large number of individuals from rival gangs led to one person being killed. Um, six unidentified individuals were seen striking the deceased in an unclear video due to them being far away of the street camera and poor lighting and, and dirty lenses. I don't know why this is always the case. Um, when we, we came to the autopsy, uh, we saw the, the scalp lacerations with the minor compressed uh, skull fracture and uh, localized uh, uh, sub subarachnoid uh, hematoma, abrasion on the right side of the forehead, as you can see there. And this is the, the uh, subarachnoid hematoma. Several, several tram lines bruises and linear abrasions in the back. Uh, almost uh, 1.3 stab wounds on the latter and distal aspect of the right arm. Several deep chop, chopping wounds on the lateral aspect of the left knee. Okay, lower leg and feet left, right, as well as the latter aspect on the right, the knee posterior aspect on the uh, of left leg and knee. Um, joint visual uh, inspection. So uh, this is where it, it becomes a learning curve, to be honest. Um, so if a specific lab does not uh, have this type of examination there yet, so it would be beneficial to at least in the beginning to have uh, the tool marks examiners come to the to the autopsy and and discuss the matter with the with the medical examiner or the or the pathologists uh, to in order for them to identify which of the injuries might have the most likely. Uh, uh, potential uh, tool marks, especially the the uh, the tool mark or the injury that was determined by the pathologist, uh, the cause of death. Okay, so this is very important for us. Uh, and the in this case specifically, we identified the 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 left knee and the right heel to have the most likely possibility or of, uh, of having uh, sufficient tool marks to examine. Uh, the required segments were sent to the firearms and tool marks section the next day for examination in the plastic container. And as we discussed earlier, um, bones have um, saline or distilled water. And, and um, uh, for this, we didn't have cartilages. So we didn't have, uh, excuse me. Okay. So the submitted left knee and right heel bone was cleaned using hot water maceration. We got ourselves a big uh, hot pot uh, with a digital dial so we can control the, the temperature when we wanted to, to, to raise up. And we can also fit in large long bones into this. We applied two tablespoons of bleach laundry detergent uh, at a constant of, of 100 degrees and almost three hours to, to decomposed uh, the flesh ligaments and tendons the entire thing but what we did is we checked on the exhibits every 30 seconds oh sorry every 30 minutes um, in order for us to to make sure that we're not damaging the the, uh, the exhibits um, after macerations the bones were dried thoroughly and casted using acutrans casting material simply because this is what we use 
um, the, we're not uh, recommending that or endorsing that this is the best for the purpose. Uh, the left knee yielded sufficient uh, striations for comparison, whereas the right heel did not. Okay, after another week, um, so um, suspects led the investigators to a garbage bag that was dug from a sandy deserted area where six swords and one axe were recovered. Um, so you can imagine the state of, of these, uh, these tools where they are literally underground uh, in a garbage bag in the middle of nowhere. And as you can imagine, the weather in Dubai is very nice. And uh, it's very hot and some uh, DNA or fingerprint evidence might have the, or the possibility of having a, a certain um, fingerprint or DNA evidence uh, deteriorate. Test marks were created in several mediums. We, we tried, uh, this is one of our, our first uh, cases. Uh, uh, we tried gelatin gel, tires, plastic tubes and wax. wax. None of the none of the mediums uh, mentioned above uh, proved to be easily controllable except wax uh, for this purpose. Uh, we saw that DIPAC was mentioned in, in several articles associated with tool marks on bone. However, it was not accessible. We could not order it from the US to have it on board. And uh, this is the, the submitted axe. Uh, was identified to be the source of the toe marks on the left knee of the deceased due to the sufficient agreement in both. Uh, when we uh, when we when we see or when we have this kind of power, the, this is general. When we give our our forensics. Um, directors, if you will, or, or even the police force that we're assisting in, uh, in investigation, the possibility to identify that this tool was used in this injury, particularly in this uh, on this murder or, uh, or suicide uh, body, then it gives you you're, you're continuing that link where some of us might not have or reach to, to an end where you would say, yes, this tool was possible because of the, the class characteristics, but now you're actually identifying it. So this is, this is something uh, strong in terms of court uh, management. Key points of this uh, presentation, um, as we mentioned, naked eye assessment for bones and cartilages is not always reliable. Um, high powered magnification with adjustable light is most uh, advantages in, in the assessment of these tool marks. Um, for bones, it is best to refrigerate or freeze them in 0.9% in, uh, saline solution or freeze them in distilled water. For cartilages, it is best to refrigerate or freeze them in buffer 10% formalin solution, transported to the tool marks examiner's lab. Um, hot water maceration is the fastest, fastest and, and easily controllable in, in, in my opinion. So um, uh, uh, there is also a paper that recommended using this, uh, this type of, of uh, maceration. And lastly, um, test sample creation with, with wax bar or normal gelatin is, uh, is more controllable for tool marks examinations. Um, just in time, thank you very much.